from Medellin. We have just enjoyed a breakfast that cost us just over $5 Canadian, so probably about $3.50 to $4 US. Now we are going to start our day with one of our favorite things to do, a free walking tour. tour and it was pretty long about two hours and 45 minutes and we really walked around quite a bit of the downtown area here in Medellin. Sorry that we weren't able to chat to you during the tour but we thought now that we're back we could give you a little bit of history and what we learned from our tour guide. Just like in the rest of all of North America and South America it seems that here in Medellin there were native people living here before the Spanish Empire settled here in what is now Medellin. It wasn't called that back then in 1616. Unlike many of the other cities that the Spanish colonized in not only Colombia, but also around Latin America, there wasn't actually any gold in Medellin. So they kind of lost interest in it. Once Colombia actually gained its independence from the Spanish Empire in 1811, that is when Medellin started to come into its own. It was actually named the capital of this region in 1826. And that was partially due to its climate being the perfect place to grow coffee, which soon became Colombia's largest export and really just contributed to the growth of this city from the mid 1800s all the way into the 20th century. However, during the 1970s, Medellin and indeed Colombia started to become very, very well known for an altogether different kind of export, cocaine. And the reason for this was in no small part down to one particular man, Pablo Escobar. He united the smaller cartels in the Medellin area in 1976 to create the Medellin cartel. And with this cartel, they made huge amounts of money and gained a lot of power from smuggling cocaine out of Colombia into the US. Because of the power that he and his cartel ended up gaining in the city, then essentially this sparked a complete reign of terror from the time that the cartel was established all the way up until his death in 1993. While there have been a few Netflix series recently that do glorify the man and the cartel and all of that kind of thing, the accounts that we have heard from locals are that it was an incredibly dangerous time. Medellin was considered the most dangerous city in the entire world. And the reason for this is because the rivalries between the Medellin cartel and other cartels in Colombia, as well as cartels overseas, ended up leading to thousands of people being murdered, not least police officers, lawyers, and politicians. However, thankfully, in 1993, Escobar was killed, and as a result, the Medellin cartel crumbled along with it. After that, there have been some power struggles, and there have been some measures to remedy the situation. Some have been successful, some not so much, but certainly that particular time between the 70s and the 90s has left a bit of a shadow over what is otherwise a beautiful city. This was a bit of an interesting tour in the sense that we really enjoyed the history that our tour guide 
imparted to us. She was very knowledgeable and actually really friendly. She's an actress and you could really tell with the way she told stories. It was engaging and very interesting. But if I'm being completely honest, I could have just chatted to her and I would have absolutely loved hearing about the history. It didn't really pertain to where we were standing in the city all the time. And this might have just been my naivete, but compared to like Cartagena, at least the downtown part of Medellin, it's not very colorful and it's so much more modern than Cartagena, which does make sense because the Spanish really used Cartagena as a major port city. It was a hub, whereas they kind of didn't have a use for Medellin, ignored it. It didn't play a big part in the Spanish empire here in Latin America. So all of the buildings here were really built once the Spanish empire left and when Colombia became independent and had money because of coffee and other exports, which means that the buildings are just so much more modern. You don't have that like interesting architecture. Of course, you will have seen that we did walk by some squares, some sculptures, some interesting churches and buildings, but it wasn't quite the same for me as in the old city of Cartagena. But again, that's just one area here in Medellin. I feel like we could have all just sat around at a bar having a drink, picking this whole guy's brain, and we would have probably had a similar kind of experience in terms of the information that we got. Don't get me wrong, there were certainly some nice buildings to look at, and obviously just getting a general feel for the city by walking through it is obviously very nice, especially when you're being toured around by a local. But again, like you say, because a lot of the buildings that you are seeing were only really built in the 60s, there's really not much history to go on with regards to the city centre. And it seems like there were some very picturesque buildings as part of the tour, but they weren't featured. We didn't really get into the history of them or the significance of any of them, which seemed a lot odd, but we still rolled with it and certainly what we ended up learning about the country, the city, the good, the bad, the ugly, was still invaluable and certainly getting that from a tour is really useful to us so that we can learn more about this awesome country. Because that's really why we travel is to learn about other cultures and history. Yeah. One of my other favorite things about traveling though mm -hmm. is trying different so let's go and do that just now because we are pretty peckish. We just got back from having the most delicious lunch. We went to a place called Ahaldritos and spent all of 17,500 pesos, which ends up being, I think it's 580 Canadian and about 425 US. But what we ended up getting was some of the best pastries I think we've ever sampled. Definitely. That pastry was better than the pastry we had for breakfast for sure. It was warm, it was crisp, it was flaky. The fillings were phenomenal. I went for carne, which is meat, but then it also had like some peas and carrots in it. And then I went for guava and cheese for my dessert one because you can get the savory or sweet. It was basically just like having pear, or grape, strawberry with cheese, which in Canada is a pretty common combination on like a charcuterie board. So it was very nice to combine some sweet and salty. Absolutely. Meanwhile, I had chicken, which was basically the same kind of filling as your meat one. And then I finished off with what is referred to here as arequipe. But in other parts of the world is referred to as dolce de leche. And anybody who's sampled that, then you will know it is absolutely divine. And having now sampled it, I think I might be addicted and that's very dangerous. That all aside, don't have any further plans for the rest of today. Day, but tomorrow we definitely do have some plans so we will pick this back up with you then until next time though take care and keep smiling